Dirty Girl here with another vintage haul from the flea market. Um, all the things I'm going to show you, they are or soon will be for sale in my Etsy shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com or uh, on, in, blah, 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 on eBay uh, where my name is Kara Lennox and I will have the links below if you are interested. And um, so I'm just going to get started. As usual, I'm going to start with the jewelry and then move on to other things. I, it was a pretty good day for jewelry and I didn't get a whole lot else, so let's get started. Um, the first thing is this awesome um, silver-plated clamper bracelet. It's a really neat, kind of abstract-looking thing, and this was a dollar. Couldn't believe it. Uh, it's not marked or anything, <clears throat> but it's pretty old, or it looks old anyway. Neat piece. And then um, I got this necklace. This is uh, Monet. I just really like the um, engraved. It's a very, this sort of thing was really popular in the 1930s, this like engraved flat collar kind of thing. And um, obviously it's not that old, but it's just a cool thing. And that was a dollar, I can't remember I said that. And then I got these on a, I believe it was a $2 table, but it might have been a $3 table, but I think it was two. I got this shell necklace with all these great big shells. Just really a fun. I love shell jewelry. I just think it's so much fun. And um, I have to say it doesn't usually sell for a whole lot. But this is a kind of an unusual piece. So well, we'll see about that. And then on that same table I got these nice um, cufflinks with the Tivoli cut glass stones in a really nice color. They're nice and big with the mesh. Um, oh, I forget what you call this kind that ha comes around like that. But anyway, uh, these are made by Dante. Um, they're also kind of uh, brutalist with that kind of nubbly uh, border on them. So uh, there is a little bit of oxidation on the mesh. I hope I can get that off. I think I probably can. And then I got some copper jewelry. I got this matching set of this copper pendant. It's kind of a sunburst. It's got a really pretty chain. And then um, this is the little bracelet that goes with it. Those were five dollars a piece. I paid up on those, but they're nice copper. They're not marked. I'm I'm hoping I'll be able to figure out who made them because they're they're nice enough quality that they look like they could have been made by, you know, somebody with a name. I'm just not marked. So we'll try. Uh, got these for free. My favorite price. These are just some Sarah Coventry um, clip-on earrings. I bought a couple of other pieces from this lady, and I, she saw me pick these up, and she says, oh, just take those if you like them. They're, Sarah Coventry usually is not worth a whole lot, um, so I don't know. I'll lock them with something else, probably. But uh, from that dealer, I also got this bracelet, which is a, another clamper. It's probably 1950s. has all the stones. For once, I bought something with all the stones. Not marked, but it's a pretty piece. And uh, then I got this also... I think I got this from her. Um, it's, I think it's some, like, some percentage silver, but not, not sterling or anything. But it's, I think it's probably Tibetan or um, something in that area of the world, anyway. Um, but it's got these really nice lapis stones. So I think ten bucks was worth it for the lapis because there's a lot. <laughs> And it's just a pretty chunky thing. And let's see. Uh, let me get to the rings. Got paid. Uh, I paid fifteen for this one. It's just very unusual. It does. It is signed. It's got a a bell logo. And I'm gonna have to uh, figure out who made that if I can. But this nice. It's got garnet, citrine, peridot. I think, and then like a blister pearl and onyx. I just thought it was kind of unusual. And then from that same dealer, overpaid for this one. <laughs> I paid $10 for this and I shouldn't have. Shouldn't have paid any more than five because it doesn't have hardly any silver. 
But I really liked it because it, it's a pinky ring that fits me and it's really flat. And so I may keep this one and wear it for a while because it's very suited to me. And then I got this ring, which is really unusual. The inlay work is just exquisite. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got these little concentric squares of different stones. And it's got a tiger eye in the middle. And then I think it's, I want to say it's amethyst and then onyx. I'm going to have to look a little closer, whether that's amethyst or something else. But it's just a really interesting ring. Uh, could be Zuni. Um, again, this is signed, but I don't recognize the logo. So I'll hopefully be able to figure that out. And then I got a couple of turquoise rings. Oh, this, uh, I paid 15 for that one. And then these were 10 apiece. <clears throat> this is, um, these are both older pieces and this is just a nice it's Native American I'm sure and it's a, just a big nice big hunk of turquoise and then this one has the leaves on it and it's the turquoise is smaller but it's a really clear nice looking piece and neither of those are signed and that's it for the jewelry uh, I got some frames for um, let's see I think I paid two dollars for this one it's a really, uh, I like the tall, skinny look of it, and it's pretty old, you can tell by looking at the back. And then, oh, this one's coming apart. I'm going to do a little work on this one. <laughs> uh, get it back together. Somebody scotch taped it. But anyway, this is just, um, it's a nice brass one. It's got really pretty cast metal work on that. And that one also, you can tell by looking at the back that it's old. And then the last one I got is this nice big Florentine frame with a bonus portrait of Grandma. Uh, has some information on the back. It says, taken October 19-3, and then you can't read the last digit. And then it says, uh, it's got a framing label on it that... Uh, is from Glendale 6, California, so it's before they had zip codes. So that would have been, I think, early 60s or earlier that this was framed. But, yeah, it's old. And I got some more. These are more of the um, Civil War era binoculars. The last ones I showed you of these was missing all the leather and just down to the brass. This has the leather, but it's coming off. So I probably will tack it back on. Uh, these are a French maker called um, Colmont, Colmont, something. Um, and they're, they are missing piece down here that connects to it right there. But the optics are still good. They still kind of work. They're really cool. And I paid 15 for those. Uh, I sold this, the other ones really quickly for a good amount of money. I can't remember how much now. I think it was at least 65 It might have been more. Uh, got a, a nice art glass paperweight. This one is signed by um, Abelman. Uh, what's his first name? I forgot his first name. Uh, it says Abelman, and very clearly says 29, but he wasn't even born in 1929. He worked in the, uh, starting in the 70s, I think, and I think is still working today. As it's kind of not a normal piece for him. He's known for these really pretty iridescent, but it's a very nice controlled bubble piece, and I paid up on that. I paid 20 bucks on that. Um, I think I could probably get over 50 for it. I'm not sure, but I think so. I got this. This is a, it's called a Lampe Berger made in France and it's a, a scent diffuser and it's kind of neat you put some kind of fuel in here and then it's got this little stone that you light on fire and I don't know if you put drops of the scent on that or what but you burn this and you blow it out and then and then you put this top on it like that and supposedly sense your room 
better than a scented candle. And there apparently are people who collect these. They've been around since the 1800s. And there's this is one of the more common shapes. I saw quite a few of these. So I paid $5 for this. And I'm not exactly sure what I can get for it, but I'm thinking maybe at least $25. Got this. Ta -da! Doesn't have any lenses in it, but it's kind of cool. There's the handle on it. And it originally... You would fold it up like that, and then this, there's a little thing on here that you would use to release it so it would go boing, but I think it, it's not holding closed anymore, but it's still cute. Uh, let's see, oh, I've got this beautiful purse. Uh, this is French beaded purse. I think that it's a, um, well, the mirror says Wahlborg. And Wahlborg is a, a good mid-century brand. They imported purses from a lot of different places. A lot of them are Hong Kong, but this one does say handmade in France. Here's the inside. It's, it's mm, fairly clean on the inside. And uh, the beading is mostly in very good condition. There's one little stain right there. Um, but otherwise, really nice. Very pretty. And I paid 15 for that. Um, I think I can probably get, I don't know, 45, 50 for it maybe, maybe more. And then I got this pipe. <laughs> I got, uh, when my friend gave me a whole bunch of stuff out of her garage, there was a whole big box of pipes, which I'm still trying to get listed. But as I've done research for pipes, I've found out what some of the good names are, and I just happened to see this one. This is a um, Ben Wade from Denmark. Um, yeah, anyway, there you have it. It's in, it's in really nice condition. It doesn't have a lot of teeth marks on it or anything, and I don't think it's been used, actually. I can't smell anything in it, uh, but I paid 10 for that, and I think that would probably sell for, um, maybe 35 This, uh, it's been a few days since I looked these things up, so I'm kind of guessing a little bit on the prices. I don't remember exactly, but something like that. And uh, I believe that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And um, if you'd like to leave a comment, I do try to read them all and I try really hard to respond to them all. Uh, I, okay, they get past me sometimes, but I'm trying to do better. All right, thanks. See you soon. Bye.